Hello and welcome to your big wet forecast for 2024-25. This forecast is valid for September 1st, 2024. There will be another edition on October 1st, 2024. And this video was recorded on the morning of August 31st, 2024. All information is valid to today. In this video, we're going to be covering all things tropical, including a rainfall forecast for all tropical and semi-tropical locations. We're going to be going in-depth to tropical cyclone forecasts as well, and an in-depth outlook of thunderstorms and what thunderstorm events are forecast for this year. We'll also touch on some wildcard forecasts, and you'll get a display of my favourite photos taken from around Australia this year. We're going to start things off today with the rainfall forecast, one of the most important factors in making a wet season forecast. This year, we're watching the sea surface temperatures warm up considerably across the north and over east, which are expected to continue to warm up and peak mid-season, which is looking to produce above average rainfall, especially across the north and eastern pockets over west. Storms and convective patterns look conducive to provide above average rainfall across central areas of the nation in one or two locations, and rainfall looks to be average to slightly above average across pockets in Western Australia, with a slight chance of above average accumulations as well into dry central Australia. And this is what I'm talking about with a brief overview of what rainfall patterns are expected where. Overall, we're not expecting too many extremely wet or extremely dry locations. It's looking average to either slightly below over in Western Australia, to slightly above across the north and over east in the subtropics. We do have a pocket of significantly above average rainfall where rainfall accumulations could be 25% higher than average across parts of far north Queensland, including Cairns up towards Weeper and Thursday Island. Rainfall there is still a little bit uncertain on the forecast, but it does look to be a wet one this wet season up there. The northern rainfall onset is also a particularly important factor in a wet season forecast. This is when 50 millimetres of rainfall accumulates after September the 1st. This season, we're expecting earlier than average northern rainfall onsets across much of the east of the nation, across the north as well, and pockets over in the west, where rainfall onset is typically later into the wet season, January and February next year. Later than usual onsets, however, are expected across northern, central, and into much more arid central Australia, around Alice Springs, and into the gas coin and the Pilbara of Western Australia. We also have a pocket where there is no reliable data in the interior of Western Australia. Again, very few people live there so it is kind of appropriate that there is no forecast data there. In the bottom bar of your screen you can also see the average onsets versus the forecast onsets for major cities and town sites across the north of the nation and you can see it's a pretty even spread between average to slightly earlier than average rainfall onsets with Alice Springs being the only location on this map at least that's expecting a later than the average northern rainfall onset. And here's a little bit more of a state-by-state -state breakdown of rainfall. You can see Stepping over in Western Australia, we are expecting a slightly wetter than average start to the wet season. It will also likely be a few days early compared to average, before a more average to slightly below average January to May, in line with how the Indian Ocean dipole is swinging. The Northern Territory overall is looking pretty much above, it's uh, slightly above average. There is a little pocket of more significantly above average uh, rainfall accumulations in December to January. That's just in line with what the forecast models are saying right now. That's a bit more of a specific niche forecast for the Northern Territory. Queensland, however, is the only runaway state where there is a big bulge in terms of much wetter than average towards the middle and the later parts of the wet season, where January, February and March, we could be seeing rainfall accumulations 25 to 50% higher than average, especially across the far north. A key aspect in understanding the forecast is to look at climate drivers and influences. You can see I've picked the three most important that can have a big swing on, uh, on our rainfall accumulation numbers, that being sea surface temperature, which you can see across Queensland, the Northern Territory and Western Australia. It's about 1 to 1.5, maybe 2 degrees Celsius above average, significantly above average in much of these places. In terms of tropical cyclone numbers, it's looking above average in Queensland, Northern Territory average to maybe just slightly below average, but Western Australia is significantly below average, which is why in consideration with the sea surface temperature anomalies, I haven't actually called for that much rainfall, all things considered, for Western Australia. In terms of conducive, climactic and thermodynamic conditions, which can drive thunderstorms, overall it's looking slightly above average for Western Australia and the Northern Territory, significantly above average for the northern part of the Northern Territory, actually around Melville Island and Darwin, and then much above average for Queensland, in fact, sort of towards the 
97th or 98th percentile there. We're expecting a lot of thunderstorms and a lot of uh, big weather events that could cause some significant rainfall across Queensland. And in the summary to this forecast, rainfall accumulations look to be much above average across tropical Queensland and parts of semi-tropical New South Wales, especially in the northeast corner of the state. Rainfall will at times be much above average to slightly above average across Western Australia and the Northern Territory. However, for the remainder of the wet season, it's looking to be closer to the average. Interior and uh, interior Australia and parts of Western Australia are still a hard settle with high levels of uncertainty surrounding the forecast there. However, we still do expect pockets of above average rainfall and below average rainfall. And as with interior Australia, it takes one major rain event to swing the scales in the way of favorability to a wet, wet season for some locations there. And that wraps up rainfall. Now we're going to talk about thunderstorms. Thunderstorms, especially for the East Coast, is a major aspect in understanding understanding how the wet season is going to perform. To begin with, we are looking at favourable climactic and thermodynamic conditions across much of the east of Australia, including warm temperatures, high humidity and atmospheric moisture availability, and a lot of convective available potential energy, some of which is already starting to show itself on the forecast models in just the coming week. This will make convective storms across Queensland and the, uh, the Northern Territory, such as Hector, more prevalent than average. More cold fronts and frontal events such as troughs will be moving across this middle half of this uh, nation as well, especially into Queensland and New South Wales, which will run up the thunderstorm numbers. And we are expecting higher than average thunderstorm days across parts of New South Wales and Queensland. And we're also looking at an above average chance of severe thunderstorms, which I'm going to break down for you right now. Now let's jump over to the map and take a look at where these thunderstorms are expected. Like I said, over in subtropical Queensland and New South Wales, more severe thunderstorms are expected this year. In fact, significantly above average chances of potentially severe thunderstorms look to be on the forecast now. We've also got above average thunderstorm days across a little pocket in the wheat belt of Western Australia, across much of Northern Australia into the tropics, and then much above average thunderstorm chances expected across the top end of the Northern Territory and into the top top end of Western Australia as well. Now the thunderstorm forecast is of course more volatile than other forecasts, but this is what I'm expecting state by state. For Western Australia with more cold fronts through the early parts of the wet season, I'm expecting significantly above average thunderstorm chances, especially across the south of the state. Also above average chances across the north in line with an expected earlier northern rainfall onset. Over the Northern Territory, it's just going to be above average all season, to be honest, with Hector the Convector being much more active north of Darwin. Subtropical Queensland and New South Wales is a bit more interesting with more severe thunderstorms expected across the initial part of the wet season, October through to November and early December. But for a temporary lull in the thunderstorm events through the middle parts of the wet season and then a return to above average thunderstorm chances across the later parts of the wet season with more rainfall events such as tropical lows sliding down the coast between February and March expected on the forecast. Again, being seven months away, things can change dramatically on late season forecast forecasts right now. This forecast is really only applicable for the next kind of couple of weeks of when we're talking about thunderstorms. They are just so volatile indeed to forecast. Let's break down those climate drivers and influences. You can see it here in terms of troughs and up fronts. They are above average nationwide for the looks of things. Significant rainfall or tropical cyclone events which can drive thunderstorm events are higher. It looks to be much below average across Western Australia. However, for the north and the east, it looks to be slightly above average average to significantly above average chances of set events occurring. And in terms of conducive climactic and thermodynamic conditions, including upper level wind shear, upper level humidity and sea surface temperatures, much above average across the east and slightly below average across the west. Let's break this down for you in a summary. Climate trends lately have recently supported much above average thunderstorm chances and activity across the east, especially through subtropical Queensland and New South Wales, which is on a wetening trend. With increased rainfall and more favorable conditions in the atmosphere, sea breeze convective storms such as Hector and the pulse thunderstorm events over the northern parts of Western Australia and Queensland look to be more prevalent across this wet season coming up. Western Australia is again the hard sell state. We're not expecting uh, too much certainty over there in this wet season forecast. However, where there's still a good chance for these thunderstorms across September and early October with frontal systems. But beyond that, it is just a hard forecast to make when you get out of the tropics. 
And now for the part that you have all been waiting for, the tropical cyclone forecast for season 2024-25. Drum roll, please. It looks to be a slightly below average season. We've been seeing the forecasts for the last five years, above average, above average, above average, and nothing happens, nothing comes to fruition. So this year, I'm calling for slightly below average tropical cyclone numbers in lieu of favorable thermodynamic conditions such as warm temperatures, a lot of mid-level humidity, and favorable sea surface temperatures. However, over in the east, Queensland, we are expecting above average tropical cyclone numbers over there with a chance of powerful systems as well. I'm not expecting a monster system to impact land this year. I reckon they're just going to be rainmaking systems like they were last year. However, I still do foresee the chance of at least three tropical cyclone landfalls, one of which will be severe over the coast of Australia, most likely over in Queensland. And here's a new climate driver outlook for you, Enso and the IOD. And so or the El Nino Southern Oscillation, we're currently sitting in a La Nina watch right now, but it's between that watch and neutral phase. I do foresee the forecast to head deeper into that La Nina watch and closer to full blown La Nina. However, I'm not expecting a La Nina to develop. If one does develop, however, it will occur between the months of October through to December, most likely in November, before a warming trend takes place early on next year. The Indian Ocean Diapole, which has a bigger influence on Western Australia with sea surface temperatures being warmer across the uh, eastern parts of the western parts rather of the Indian Ocean meaning cooler than average sea surface temperatures are possible over Western Australia in turn creating for an unfavorable tropical cyclone environment there. Take a look at this map this took me a while to make so appreciate it in all of its glory this is the cyclones over overview sub basin by sub basin across the entire Australian basin I've broken it down into three sectors the west which is expecting between one and four tropical cyclones this season. A big array of uncertainty. However, we're just not sure there. A few weak systems could pop up and just add to that total. The average there is three to five, which means it is still significantly below average, with the hot spot of activity being well away from the West Australian coastline. I'm not expecting a major landfall over Western Australia, but a powerful long track tropical cyclone is possible very close to the Western Australian coastline this season. The Northern Territory Basin, or at least the coastline around the Northern Territory, again, a difficult sell up there between zero to three tropical cyclones below the long-term average of one to four. I would not be surprised if a severe tropical cyclone piped up in the Gulf of Carpentaria and made landfall around the Groot Island or Mornington Island, something like that. But again, it's just too far out to really tell at this time. The cyclone season does have a very high degree of uncertainty around its forecast. What I can say with a high degree of confidence though is Queensland can expect an above average amount of tropical cyclone, especially weak tropical cyclone activity. Nothing too crazy in terms of a forecast for all out mayhem across the Queensland coastline, but a hotspot being between Airlie Beach right up through Cairns and Cook down towards Thursday Island. I'm expecting at least one tropical cyclone landfall there before January. I'm also expecting a severe tropical cyclone to pipe up before February sometime in the northern parts of the Coral Sea. The long-term average being 11 tropical cyclones. This season, I'm expecting a pretty measly four to nine tropical cyclones. If I was to put a number on it, it would be seven or eight. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's going to be a busy cyclone season, but I do still expect that there will be some tropical cyclone activity to write home about this year. And once again, let's break this down month by month. Over in Western Australia, there is a chance of above average cyclone activity in the early season, but that will fall off very quickly past December and January. I'm expecting below average cyclone activity for much of the later half of the season. In the Northern Territory, it's a similar forecast, just a bigger bulge. I'm expecting the activity there to be closer to normal compared to Western Australia. It's Queensland though where the big activity is going to be, especially like I said, weak tropical lows and tropical cyclones between January and March. They will be much above average with up to three tropical cyclones possible now on the forecast between February, mid-February and mid-March, which is typically the busiest part of the season before a sharp decline in activity late March and early April as an El Nino looks to develop into the middle and the later parts of 2025. And in terms of climate 
how much drivers and influencers see such temperatures nationwide above average, except for a few cool pockets around Western Australia and parts of Queensland. I expect they will iron themselves out by November and the start of the tropical cyclone season. In terms of atmospheric favorability, this is a hard forecast to make and I've kept it conservative at around the long-term average. I do expect conditions to become less favorable for tropical cyclones in the atmosphere. I reckon there will be more wind shear, especially over the Western Australia, the Northern Territory and parts of far north Queensland this cyclone season. In terms of available energy or tropical waves for systems, much above average across Queensland, slightly above average for the Northern Territory and then much below average across coastal Western Australia. But again, we are still in the early phases of the season and adequately analyzing how much energy is available in these systems for tropical cyclones is hard to do before they actually exist. Now let's summarize this in detail. Most likely cyclones happen between the months of October to April this year. I reckon it'll be skewed earlier on in the season, still expecting cyclones to continue through to April, but I reckon the bulk of the activity will be in the earlier months of the season. An earlier than usual start is expected for western parts of the basin in line with the expected early arrival of the northern wet season, which where most more activity is expected over east. The Coral Sea is also expecting above average activity towards the later half of the season, like I said, February and March, however, with a bias towards weaker cyclones and tropical lows over the east this year. Now, in terms of the graph, you can see on the right-hand side of your screen, the cyclone season is expected to start off hot until about December, when the cyclone numbers will temporarily dwindle off before resurging again into the later half of the season. And you can see a wide scope of uncertainty between four and nine tropical cyclones. I don't foresee there being as lot as four tropical cyclones. However, just with the way the weak cyclone systems are expected and how ruthless the Bureau of Meteorology can be when classifying tropical cyclones, I reckon there is still a chance that we see very little tropical cyclone activity and a huge array of just boring tropical lows this cyclone season. And that, my friends, does it. Thank you so much for watching the video to this point. This has been your initial preliminary wet season forecast for 2024-25. There will be another forecast coming out October the 1st and then another one after that on November the 1st. There will be tropical updates running November right through to April and you bet any tropical cyclone that pops up on the radar, it will be covered in great detail on this channel. If I've left anything in that answer, please do let me know in the comment section down below. Please do let me know if, you can, if you've got a specific question for your location. I'd love to get back to you. I want nothing left unanswered for this cyclone season. We need to continue our run of having one of the lowest fatality rates of any uh, country in the event of tropical cyclones around the world. It's fantastic to see that we do take weather systems like this very seriously across the nation. And I want to see that trend continued with very low fatality numbers or no fatality numbers across much of the basin year round, which is just fantastic to see. And I'm very proud that Australia does take systems like tropical cyclones so seriously. Thanks so much for watching the video to this point. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and leave a like on the video as well. All information is valid as of August 31st when I'm recording this video. This is just a forecast. This is not me uh, magically figuring out exactly what's going to happen this cyclone season. So make sure you do take this with a grain of salt and make your own forecast if you are slightly uncertain. This is just meant to be used as guidance. That is all for me today and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.